Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Movie Snips. Today we're going to be talking about how the 1998 sci-fi action movie Soldier ties into the Blade Runner universe, especially in regards to how the timelines of the two franchises intersect. In case some of you are unfamiliar with the storyline of the film, the film is about a group of elite soldiers who are selected at birth and trained to become perfect, relentless killing machines who obey orders without question. These soldiers have no understanding of any aspects of human society other than strict military routine. One such soldier, Todd 3465, played by Kurt Russell, proves to be the best and brightest out of the squad. However, as time goes on, Todd and his fellow soldiers get replaced by a new breed of test tube manufactured, genetically enhanced super soldiers, which, cause, which causes Todd to be rendered obsolete. He gets dumped on a waste disposable, disposal planet by his superior officers and is presumably left for dead. The premise of Soldier was actually based on an unused opening scene for the original Blade Runner movie, in which a group of replicant soldiers are dumped and left for dead on an off-world colony. Soldier is considered somewhat of a spiritual successor or sidequel to the original Blade Runner movie of 1982. David Peoples, the screenwriter who co-wrote the script for Blade Runner, also wrote the script for Soldier. Many critics bash the movie on film review websites such as Rotten Tomatoes and CinemaScore, and Bruce Westbrook of the Houston Chronicle commented that the, the action is handled fairly well, but it's routine and there's no satisfaction in seeing Todd waste men who are no more bloodthirsty than he is. I, for one, love the movie and still consider it to be one of the greatest sci-fi action movies of all time. The opening scene of the movie shows a group of infants born in the year 1996 who were chosen by a military officer to be raised as soldiers. One of the infants chosen is Todd. 1996 is 23 years prior to the events of the original Blade Runner movie, which is set in 2019. The initial events of Soldier probably take place before World War Terminus occurs in the Blade Runner universe, which is essentially World War III. So as the movie progresses further, we see Todd fighting a battle in outer space on the Argentine moons in the year 2036. The Argentine moons were actually discussed in the Blade Runner fandom as being an off-world colony based on a series of moons with plut plutonium furnaces with temperatures as high as 1200 degrees Fahrenheit. The moons may have also been mentioned in the Blade Runner comic books. Nexus 6 replicant Roy Batty apparently fought, fought in battles at this location during the off-world campaigns. In the following scene, we get a glimpse of Todd's co combat history. References are made to the Tannhauser Gate and the Shoulder of Orion, two battles that Roy Batty also fought in. This was evidenced in the famous Tears in Rain monologue. In a list of weapons that Todd has used in his battles, we get mention of the 3008 USCM smart gun, a weapon similar to the M4A1 USCM smart gun, a weapon similar to, to the one which is a weapon that was used by the Colonial Marines in the Alien movie. The trailer for the movie also featured a spectacular space battle involving 20 or 30 ships around the planet, even though this scene wasn't actually included in the movie itself. Fans of the movie speculate that this was probably the Battle of Tannhauser Gate. In the scene where the new genetically enhanced soldiers are introduced to the forces by Colonel Meekum, we hear the Colonel say that these new soldiers are practically manufactured using DNA profiles and are improved in every way possible. This is very similar to how replicas in the Blade Runner universe are envisioned, especially the latter models of the Nexus line. These new soldiers would probably have been either Nexus 8 or Nexus 9 replicants, given that the majority of the events in the movie are set in the year 2036. This time frame is just a little over a decade before the events of Blade Runner 2049, which lends credence to this idea. If you look closely, you also notice that there's a logo inscribed on the training floor in the scene that says American Forces, also translated into Fuerzas Americanas. This movie has strong fascist overtones and it is uncertain as to whether the United States still exists as an independent country or whether the North American countries, which could include Canada and Mexico, have coalesced into a larger United super country. In the scene where Todd gets dumped on waste disposal planet Arcadia 234, you'll notice that the waste disposal ships look like scaled up versions of those that are seen dumping trash on the outskirts of Los Angeles 
in the Blade Runner 2049 sequel. As Todd makes his way to the refugee camp, you'll notice the wreckage of a spinner vehicle in one of the heaps of trash that surround the camp. This is perhaps the most telltale sign of a clear connection between the two movies. The spinner looks more like the older version used by Deckard in the first Blade Runner film as opposed to the newer version which Kay uses in the Blade Runner sequel. Shortly after Todd gets rescued by the settlers, uh, Sandra tells Mace that there are words tattooed on Todd's shoulder that say Tannhauser Gate and Argentine Sector, once again referencing the prior battles that Todd had participated in. As we move further into the film, the new soldiers arrive on Arcadia 234, and the ship that brings them to the planet resembles some of the ships that are depicted in the trailer for the film. These are probably the attack ships that Roy Batty alludes to in his Tears in Rain monologue. Presumably, these ships also have some kind of FTL capability or travel through wormholes to reach far-flung interstellar destinations. I made a separate video exploring the possibility of FTL travel in the Blade Runner universe, so please be sure to visit my channel and check it out. After Todd's crawler unit rams into and knocks over Kane 607's crawler unit, Kane eventually regains consciousness and reaches for a utility bag that contains some pills and a syringe. He swallows the pill, the pills and injects himself with the syringe, presumably to boost his adrenaline levels and ease his pain. This utility bag is much like the Nexus 8 replicant Sapper Morden's combat utility bag seen in the opening scenes of Blade Runner 2049. Towards the end of the film, Todd orders Riley to set a course for the Trinity Moons, presumably an off-world colony that never received mention in the Blade Runner universe. But what are your thoughts on the Soldier-Blade Runner connection? If you feel I missed anything or would like to add anything to this discussion, please feel free to comment down below. Please also remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel, and please check out my channel for more sci-fi lore videos.